Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 55 of Gaston's Great, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long, and we are coming to you once again from the international headquarters of GSM Services right here in downtown Gastonia as we look forward to having some great discussions in the coming weeks and months. We simply believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's great. We're highlighting another great organization this week as we highlight the Kingdom Men of Gaston County. We have Matt Vanderbilt with us today, who is, the, I guess, the leader of the organization, for lack of a better um, description. Matt, it's great to have you on, and welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you, Stephen, for having me. I did some research on you guys and scanned through all the, the great people you've had on here. Kind of intimidated. <laughs> well, yeah, tell me about it. I get to uh, be intimidated every week when we have one of these <laughs> interviews. And just yeah, remember that uh, the professional is Amy Anderson over here on, at the table. So you and I are just the roadies this week we for, are. Absolutely. for Amy. So we're going to get uh, right to it. Uh, Matt, if you don't mind, just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, anything that you uh, want to share for our listeners. Sure. Well, I'm originally from Michigan, and when I hit uh, – Post high school age, I thought, man, it's the time for me to move because I don't like snow, I don't like cold, and I always heard that the South was a, a warmer place to live, better pace of life. I came and visited once in December, and we played tennis, <laughs> and I thought this is the place for me. And so, I uh, moved on down when I was about eighteen and started at UNC Charlotte, where I ended up meeting uh, my future wife Meg, who is a native of Gaston County. And I remember okay. the first time I came out to her house, I. Got off of exit 13 at Edgewood, and it seemed like we drove every back road to get to her house. I thought, am I going to be find my way out of here? Like, you know, Gaston County, of course, in Charlotte, you hear all these things about Gaston County this and trailers and couches on the front porch and all that. And, like, <laughs> where am I going? Yeah. Am I going to come out? So and, were you uh, headed up? Was that toward Bessemer City or toward Crowder's Mountain? Toward Crowder's Mountain. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and the more I spent spend time out here, I thought, man. This is a this is an amazing place. You got Crowder's Mountain. You got, you know, proximity to Charlotte. You got I mean, just a great pace of life, great weather. And so, anyways, we got married. We graduated from UCC and moved here. And uh, I have never wanted to leave. Um, we've uh, been married twenty six years. We got three kids. Uh, one of them just got married in December. So now I guess I got four kids. And. Wow. Um, we got animals coming out of our ears. I know you guys had Bit of Hope Ranch on here in the we fall. Did. Yep. So that's kind of uh, half of our arsenal of animals out there at the ranch. We got 50 acres of animals out there. And then at our house, personally, we have chickens, bunnies, cats, and dogs. So we uh, we love animals in, in the Vanderbilt life. And uh, and honestly, I love uh, I love Gaston County. I love the name of this of Gaston's Great because. You know, I do some work in Charlotte at times, and I do love bragging on Gaston County because well, I good. do think it's a great place to live. It absolutely is. Yeah. So a couple things uh, that I heard there. First, Edgewood Road. I don't think I've ever shared this on the podcast, but my parents lived on Bright Avenue when I was born, which is off of Edgewood okay. Road going toward yeah. toward Bessemer City. Yeah. And then secondly, you said 26 years. So has you have you already in, celebrated your anniversary this year, or is it uh, later in the year? Yes, it was uh, June – Eighth was twenty six years. How about you? How many okay, uh, March second was twenty six years for us. Is so, that right? so yeah, we were we were married in the same year. So oh, excellent. This is this is a good year. This is going to be the best episode we've had yet, <laughs> Amy. Correct. And you know, we got married at Stowe Garden before it really like became something that we could not afford anymore. So I don't know where you guys got married at, but we were one of the last weddings at First Baptist Church on Franklin yeah. before um, I guess it became Unity Place and. Um, and gosh, I'm gonna be in trouble when I don't remember the name of the church now. Um, oh man, oh, man I'm about. in big trouble because I go to basically across the street. I go to First Methodist now, uh-huh. and so boy, I'm in trouble. Oh, oh boy! <laughs> All right, so we're gonna move on. So um, this is good, Matt, because um, I know very little about the Kingdom Men. I'll admit, so sure. that's kind of one reason I was excited about this. I know a few people yeah. involved. So kind of maybe combine a few questions. Combine. Combine a few questions. <laughs> you just combine, yeah. Yeah, so um, tell us maybe what it is, how you got involved, sure. and just kind of the history, mission of Kingdom and anything you want to can share with our, our listeners. Definitely. Well, uh, as we were talking about bef- before the broadcast about how life has changed so much these last couple of years, you know, when, um, when COVID hit, what was that, March, April of 2020? Yep. And through 2020, 
you know, those of us that, that did have relationships in churches and, and those type of settings, you know, many of those things just, we got isolated. Immediately. Immediately. Yep. And so you go into the summer, and uh, me and, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm part of Vision Church, and me and some of the guys, we were talking, we said, you know, we just miss getting together with other yep. guys. Everybody's so isolated. So I think it was August of, of 20, we said, you know, why don't we just have a... Um, like a like a prayer breakfast. It'll probably be outdoors because you know back then we still everybody was just so concerned about being inside and proximity. So we say, okay, well let's uh, let's plan on having an outdoor prayer breakfast type thing in October, and we just start spreading the word to different pastors, friends, you know, Mayor Reed, uh, different people, and say, guys, let's let's gather some leaders together to see what it should look like in October. So over at Vision, we we met in the gym, we spread tables out, we had. About 20 leaders come in two different times. And we say, guys, what can we do for men in our community? Something that's not denominational, something that's not racial, something that's not, you know, uh, based on socioeconomic class. And it could just feel like a vibe in the room where guys were like, yeah, let's do something to get guys together. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit about F3. I think it kind of yeah. has that feel. Yeah, sure, yep. Where you just kind of break it, it down does, barriers. It does sound like it, yeah. Yeah, and so we're in this room with these guys, and the second group of leaders we were with talking about it, um, they were like, well, what are you going to call it? What is it going to be? And I was just open with them. I said, I don't know what we're going to call it. And uh, I don't know if you know Matt Kukin over at First yes. ARP. Yep. And Matt kind of raised his hand. He said, hey, uh, this is about just the kingdom of God, right? I said, yeah, it's not about any church. He said, the kingdom of God? I said, why don't you call it kingdom men? I said, Matt, that's a great idea. Let's call it Kingdom Men. And so uh, from that point, we started spreading the word and said, guys, in October, we're going to have an outdoor um, with a band and some food. And, um, man, the first one, we had close to 150 men showed up on a Saturday morning. We had a live band, which uh, I, I love it because one of the, the elements of Kingdom Men is I think it reflects the diversity of our community. Okay. And that first band we had – you, know, you had guys like like Ricky Collins, you know, from City Church, and you had some some white guys and some Hispanic guys and some black guys, and the, the stage just had the color and reflection of Gaston County on it. And we just came out there just to sing and praise God and then have a speaker and have some food. And everybody kind of scattered and said, wow, this really felt good. It was <laughs> For most people, it was the first time getting back together in a group setting since March. And so um, it got done, and guys were like, well, what's next? We said, okay, we we'll really need to figure out you know, what this is about. It's more than just a breakfast. And so we really spent some time analyzing what we're about. And I'm big on simplifying things. Um, in fact, not to jump ahead, but question number 20 about what I would tell my 20-year-old my self yeah. is that most of the times in life, if you can simplify things and slow down, you can really, I think, get more enjoyment out of life. And Because I think we just try to complicate things too much. So with Kingdom Men, we say, you know, we really need to simplify this. So uh, we pulled some guys from different churches. We said, let's kind of have a, a, a pseudo-leadership team and figure out what we're about. And uh, ultimately, our, our simple um, statement came out and said, you know, we're just about empowering men to be more like Jesus. We say, you know, we're not trying to be more like Baptist or Methodist or Catholic or non-denominational or black or white or rich or poor. We said, if, if men are more like Jesus... We think our community's better. So why don't we just do that? Let's just help guys to be more like Jesus. And so we said, okay. You know, we, we originally had shirts that had kingdom men on it. Then eventually we started getting a little tagline that simply said, empowering men. Because I like that word empowering. Because yeah. I, I think, you know, everybody needs to be empowered for, for good things in life. And so best we can help guys to be empowered, to be more like Jesus, and, and then to go back to their church or go back to their family or go back to their place of business and just treat people more like Jesus would treat them and uh, be better husbands and fathers and workers. And so from there, Kingdom Men started growing to where um, now we have multiple, quote-unquote, large events each year, 50 to 150 guys that come together for some music, for some teaching, for some food, and some fellowship. And there's no pointing toward a church. There's no pointing toward a denomination. It's just guys coming together. And, uh, in fact, the one we had recently out at, I don't know if, if you've heard of Kingdom Life Church, out on the west side, they're a, uh, a Hispanic-based church. And we, we met out there one night and had this type of event where you look out in the crowd and it's getting the colors of Gaston County. Right. It's beautiful. And so, um, so that's one part we do. We have events. We also have small groups where we get guys to, to meet at different churches. And um, the group I lead, <clears throat> we meet every other uh, – Every other Saturday at, at Vision Church, we have guys from five or six different churches that come to the group. 
And we tell them from the start, we are not trying to get you to come to any of our churches. <laughs> we just It's kind of like F3 again, where it's like right. guys get together. They know they're different. They have different backgrounds, different things, but they come together with a commonality. And we just open up the Bible and say, you know, let's learn more about this and how we can go and, and just be more like Jesus. And so we have the large events. We have the small groups. And then we also have service days, which we just finished um, one. We do it typically twice a year. And uh, the one we just did um, where guys went out and uh, assembled some benches at some schools. They uh, did some work down at the city set on a hill. And then we went to another lady's uh, yard. It actually happened to be Walker Reed's neighbor and uh, blessed okay. her and her son with some yard work because we just believe that men should serve. Yeah. That uh, and, and again, when they're doing it, they may or may not be wearing kingdom men shirts, but they're not wearing anything political. They're yes. not wearing anything with like, you know, statements about what I believe and what I think. We just want to serve people and bless people because we think when you act more like Jesus, that a community is better. So in a nutshell, that is uh, kind of the, the history of Kingdom Men and um, the heartbeat of Kingdom Men. And it's, it's open to all guys. Um, it's even guys who don't even go to church. we got some guys sometimes come to it and say, you know, we just want to hang out with some guys and just be encouraged and make some friendships. And um, we just feel like it can make our community better to have that type of vibe among men in our community. I know it's very is very F three ish with maybe a little more you know of the faith piece. Mm -hmm. Even though yeah. you know F three is a fitness fellowship of faith, the uh -huh. faith is it's non denominational. It's very intentional to be non denominational. Even though here in Gaston County, it probably does is a little Christian leaning, sure uh, for sure. But it is uh, most people think it's a workout group. Um, it is a leadership group, and, and it's its actual mission is to um, invigorate male community leadership that's, wow. that's the purpose of f3 invigorate. i like that word yeah it, it, it's to me yeah, empower and invigorate oh, um, put yeah. those two words together on a daily basis we might be a might be accomplishing something. <laughs> absolutely so i, like I really that. like i really like what you said and and i'm gonna and at the risk of getting in trouble amy you can you can edit this out if i you know get out of hand here <laughs> but my experience over the last couple of years uh personally with groups like F3, with what you're describing, with my interaction yeah. with uh, community organizations, it's not what I see portrayed on the news. Um, it, it's when I'm, right. you know, dealing with uh, just individuals and groups, um, the diversity or whatever, however you want to describe yeah. it, the interactions are 99% of the time are, are positive. Yes. And, and yes. so that's kind of, we talked a little bit beforehand, you, know, you asked, uh, why did we start this? That may be, Hearing you talk about that might be the biggest reason why we started this is to get the word out that, you know, look at what your daily interactions are. What you are, what are you experiencing personally, um, interactions with your with our community and with each other, and I get most of the time. Listen, don't, don't get me wrong. Our community has issues. Sure, our sure. country has issues. Yeah. The world has issues. Mm -hmm. um, but the more we focus on that, I think the more it divides us. Actually, right. again. Sorry, I'm getting on my little soapbox here. Thanks no, to, I thanks, think that's thank, very valid. Thanks, thanks to Matt. So, you, I mean, you covered, okay, you covered about 19 out of our 20 passes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, how we jump to number six, the, uh, the impactful stories. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there was a couple I thought of. Um, we, you know, we had that first event in October of 20. We had our next one in January of 21, and it was out at uh, First Assembly. It was our first indoor one, and we liked that facility because it's so large. Yeah. So we said we can come in there, guys can spread out. And one story from that, we had put some banners out by the road that basically just said, hey, men, come and hang out with us. And um, so that night, we're having barbecue, and all of our events are free. We never charge a guy for anything because what we do is we basically say, if you're a church or an individual or a business and you believe in what we're doing, give to our 501c3, and we will use this to buy books for the men, food for the men, shirts for the men, so that no man is ever has the obstacle of it costs money. None of our guys make money. We don't have anybody on staff that gets paid. And we take all that money and pour it back in the ministry. So we're at the event. We're feeding the guys. And um, I meet this, this one guy, uh, Chris, you know, black guy. Great just aura to him. You can just sense, like, man, he just – I gave him a hug the first time. I'm like, man, I just – I like this guy instantly. And he's in there, and he's worshiping, enjoying it. We come out of the event, and what we, de we design strategically is after the program, we then have coffee and dessert so men can mingle and talk. And I look down the hallway – and Chris is sitting on this, this bench in the lobby with a man who honestly just looks homeless. And I look over there and I realize Chris just came to this event for the first time. He saw a banner. He came to the event. 
And by the end of it now, he is already ministering to another man in our community. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking that there is something in people, and this is where the media doesn't talk about. There is something in people that want to do what's right and want to do what's good for people. And I looked over there, and I saw Chris, this guy who came in to be ministered to, and within an hour and a half, now he was ministering to another guy. And I thought, you know, that's, that is what the kingdom of God is about. And it was, it was such a great win, such a great feeling. Another win, a couple months after that, um, we got to have the inaugural event in the Fuse. Um, uh, Walker Reed was so good to us, and the whole team at the Fuse was so good to us, so generous to get us in there the first time. And um, this was, uh, I think it was April of last year, and we go in there, we had this community event where we had the pitching machine. Yeah, we yeah. had all this stuff going on where dads and kids are mingling. There was three, 400 guys come out. Again, it was all free. We didn't charge anybody for hot dogs or playing. Or we, you know, we had the band and everything. And to look around and, again, to see the diversity of Gaston County, particularly dads and sons. There's just something to me that's special about that, that it, it's a big gap in our, in our just whole country that when you see a dad and his son come out and just do things together that are wholesome, that are relationship building, and, uh, and, and Walker Reed was there, you get up to share, and you just see him just beam. <laughs> that when he dreamed of that facility, it was for moments like that and moments like with the Honey Hunters and moments like with graduation ceremonies. And me and Walker just said, man, this is a great place to live. Yeah. It's a great thing to be a part of. And then the last story is just a couple weeks ago when we had our service, our uh, second time of the year, uh, service day, and uh, I had contacted Walker and said, Walker, is there a, maybe a single mom who could use a blessing in her yard? And he, he chose his next-door neighbor and this lady with her teenager. And that group of guys went over there and just cut stuff and, and pulled stuff down and cleared out her yard. And by the time I got there, she was just in tears, just amazed that men would come on her property and just serve her and her son. And then I went by to see Walker, and uh, you know he's been having some health problems. We had a good chance to connect and talk see him beam again of like this is our community yeah. this is what people do especially especially men that might look different absolutely <laughs> and, and they did look different and uh, for her to feel like wow I'm, I'm noticed I'm cared for my son and in fact one of the men contacted me last week and he said Matt um, I know we cut a bunch of brush and left it by the road he said I want to make sure it got pick up, picked up because I'd hate for, to think that that lady was left with all that he said can I contact her to find it I said absolutely so just to see that men they don't need to be in the spotlight they just want to serve and help people, and I think that's that's a part of, of God's kingdom. And in fact, when you look in the Bible, and it talks about Jesus saying, you know, the, the kingdom of God is here, the kingdom of God is in you, and people are like, what does that mean? I thought the kingdom of God is heaven. The kingdom of God is when we act like Jesus and treat people fairly and with love and we serve them. To me, that's, that's the kingdom of God. And so um, the more we can have that in our community, I feel like we're winning. Yeah, sure. I do. How many people, I mean, how many you know how many men you've impacted directly, or is it, that that's probably a hard Boy. question? Um, it, it, probably it's probably close to a thousand people now that okay. have been a part of our events. Um, we have I think we got six small groups now meeting around around town. Uh, part of my vision, which ties into question number nine of where we'd like to be in five or ten years, I would love to see dozens of kingdom and groups kind of again following the model of F three. Yeah. Of why not just duplicate that? and put it in multiple places on multiple nights, different times, um, almost along the lines. I don't know if you know that Celebrate Recovery. Have you ever heard of that, uh, that program? Mm -hmm. it, it, it helps people that are dealing with addictions. Okay. And the goal with that is in, that in a community, kind of like AA, that you'd always have a, an opportunity to go to one of those groups when you're in a moment of need. Well, I'd love for Kingdom Men to have groups every night of the week so that if a man says, you know, I'm just really struggling tonight. I need to go hang out with some guys in a good place. Right. Not in a bar, not in a, you know, a <laughs> strip club. But man, can I go and hang out with some guys and get some positive encouragement? And so ideally have these men's small groups throughout the week. Again, totally free. That guys can come and have a safe place. Um, and just uh, just grow it again to where more men can be impacted, because then that blesses churches, blesses homes. That's part of our vision for it. Yeah, so to your point, I know F3 started, you mentioned going to the Shield Museum. That's where we started yeah. March of 2015. So here we are seven years wow, later. Seven and years it's, in, yeah. it's seven days a week. Uh, there's 25 or 26 workouts now in Gaston County yeah. that, over, over the seven days. Now, so some of the locations have repeat workouts. Sure, so sure. But there's probably 20 different locations that we're – So, so you know, how often do you tend to go? Well, when I am um, not dealing with any injuries, um, a good week for me is four times. Really? 
Yeah. So which which uh, locations and what times do you go? So to? Um, Shield Museum, uh, Martha Rivers. Mm-hmm. Well, we actually we're so early the park isn't open yet, so we right. meet there. Is it Pelicans or yeah. Snowballs? Pelicans, yeah. I think, uh-huh. is what it's called now. Uh-huh. So we meet there Monday and Wednesdays, and then today um, when I'm when I'm running, it's a running group that we meet at um, Publix, the Publix parking lot there in uh, Southeast Gastonia. Yeah. Yeah, and then Sunday is um, I'll go to uh, the Harris Teeter. That's that uh, in the same Absolutely. part of it. But you know, we're in Dallas, um, we're in Belmont, um, Cramerton. Very good. You know, so yeah, uh, I think that we started just started one actually up in Ranlow. Oh yeah. Uh, in the past few weeks, so yeah, we're covering a lot of. So, so to your point, it's a but that's what it takes, right? It takes a couple guys to lead something and to, to expand kind of what you're yeah. what you're talking about. So, I mean, you kind of just mentioned it. Is there anything to expand on that vision mm-hmm. five or ten years from now, or is that just the small group thing? Is Because ultimately, is that really how you make the greatest impact? The events it, it are is. good, but the, the small group. The groups. small group is the greatest impact. It really is. Um, and ultimately, five or ten years from now, I would love people from outside of Gaston County to look at Gaston County and say, man, what, what is different about that community? Yeah. And to a small degree, Kingdom Men would be a part of that. We'd say, you know, more men are – Faithful to their wives, more men are good husbands, good dads, more men are good workers. That that literally, that you know, you go to interview somebody and it come up in the conversation yeah. that they're part of Kingdom Men, and that would be a good attribute of them. You <laughs> say, yeah, I know that. It's like an F three, like, wow, you're an F three. Okay, you must you know have this, and and truly, our community would be better because Kingdom Men is here. And um, originally, we kind of got ahead of ourselves. We said, man, let's help. Let's try to duplicate this in other communities. We went out to um, uh, somewhere about an hour from here, and they said, can you help us do this? We went to them and tried, and it was, it was too hard to try to create it like an hour away. So maybe in time we can do that. But, but in Gaston County, we just love it for, to grow and have uh, uh, just hundreds and hundreds of men involved in it to where it just has a reputation where people are in need, and mayors in need, or the city council say, you know, can Kingdom Men help us with this? <laughs> Absolutely. That's what we'd like, like it to be. So impacting men and also a resource for uh, that others might be aware of. So you've probably already answered this question, but I'm going to uh, ask it anyway. Sure. Is you know being kind of focused on why Gaston County is such a great place. I mean, why maybe say it differently, or why is Gaston County better because you know, Kingdom Men is here? Um, I think it's better because it gives um, kind of a target for men that you know, I've been in ministry for 25 years. And I just have known so many men that have just have drifted in their marriages, drifted in their, you know, addictions and different things. And said, look, if we can give them a target that says, you know, this is what a kingdom man looks like. Um, in fact, one of my heroes in this is Tony Evans, you know, the pastor out of Texas. And he actually uses that term kingdom man stuff to where we'd love to rally guys and say, you know, this is a great target to have to be a kingdom man. You know, and you can be a Baptist or a Methodist or, you know, you can be whatever denomination or color you are. But if you if you think about God's kingdom, it will help you to be a better man. Uh, in fact, one of the, the scriptures I love is in Ephesians where it talks about you know the, the men and the women and their roles as husbands and, and wives. And a lot of times it's misinterpreted when it says, you know, wives submit to your husbands because I tell the guys in Kingdom Men, I said, look, that, that type of submission means if you're in a home with your wife and something is about to come through your front door, are you willing to stand between that something and your wife? And you basically say, you know, you know, wife would you like to submit to me and that means if there's someone coming through there with a gun you know i will take it for you and so when that the way that plays out in our community so well so when you're you know in the grocery store and someone needs help you know will, will you serve them like a kingdom man you know in your in your church will you you know protect your pastor and bless your church in your workplace will you be a man of integrity um, all those pieces where people say man this this community is better because more men are thinking about you know, God's kingdom, rather than thinking, honestly, about Matt's kingdom, about Stephen's kingdom. They're thinking about God's kingdom. And so the more we can help help men to have that kind of target, we think we can be a better community. And uh, and that that make me proud if that's part of my legacy. You know, whenever whenever I die and go home and, and God says, okay, Matt, you left Gaston County a little bit better because there's more men thinking about God's kingdom, I'd be pretty pleased with that. Or maybe we should stop the podcast after that. <laughs> that was good. Um, Thanks. So y- yeah, you've kind of um, you've really done a great job of kind of describing this. So, what um, what advice would you give someone wanting to get involved? I mean, we're before we finish, we'll make sure our listeners know 
how to how to donate, how to get involved. Sure. The website's sure, terrific, by the way. I spent some time. Oh, thank I, you. I spent some time on the website uh, yesterday, yeah. and, and so just you know, what advice would you give somebody want to get involved? Whether it's volunteering, whether it's getting their church involved, or yeah. I mean, what, what would oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Um, we um, we definitely love to to walk people through. I always call things test drives. You know, who who wants to go to a, a car dealership and be you know choose the first one and boom, you bought it, and made a commitment. Man, you you like to test drive things. So yeah. same thing with Kingdom Man. We say, look, first of all. Start on the website, surf it. Go to our Facebook page, you know, Kingdom and Gaston, surf it. Contact us if you have questions. Um, come and visit a small group. Come and visit one of the large events. Come and try out the uh, the service day. And any of those things, I say, you know, if you even just come to any of them, then we'll give you a shirt. And, in fact, our stock was low. I was going to bring one today. <laughs> so I will be back with, to get you a Kingdom and shirt. And uh, because, you know, we think there's something that hopefully gives people a good sense of positive pride when like wow i'm wearing something i'm a part of god's kingdom i'm a part of a thing that that uh, is bigger than myself and so uh we say why don't you come test drive any of these if someone has a church like um for example we met, mentioned matt Cukin, first arp you know those guys they said hey can we come to one of the events and try one of the thing and try try a small group there we said absolutely if you want the materials we'll give you the materials you want shirts we'll give you shirts and, in fact, then what we do is some of the guys from our lead team will actually will go, if they let us, go to their first small group at their church and say, man, let's sit with you. Let's help you try it. Let's help you so you're not intimidated. You're not nervous. I mean, because uh, you know, a lot of guys are nervous. They open the Bible and they think, I have to know all of this to talk about any of it. And No, no, you don't. You really don't. Um, that's where grace comes in. We just kind of, you know, help each other on the journey. And so, if guys, check out our website, our Facebook page. Come and visit a group, visit an event. Um, we can come meet with them. Um, I love meeting leaders, and just talking, getting to know them, and say, however we can help you, let us know. And so um, uh, we have definitely seen nice, slow, steady growth. Uh, in terms of giving, I even tell people, look, if you want to give to it, that's great. Sure. But guys that believe in this, they're already giving to it. You know, companies are, churches are. So there uh, truly is never like an, an ask at the end of my presentation. I'm like, look. If you believe in this, give to it. If you want to wait, that's fine. And that's what I tell people uh, so that um, we can proudly say that men never have to pay for anything. It's never an obstacle. So um, so in terms of being involved, um, I would love anybody who's listening to this saying, man, I'd love to connect with Matt. Man, they could you know, get on our Facebook page or website. They can get on my personal Facebook page, message me. That's not usually the quickest way I respond. I don't gotcha. know about you, but, yeah, yeah. but I will um, at least be aware of it and get back to them. Um, and love for them to, to, to check us out and look and see our photos and our testimonies, our stories, and uh, and hopefully it stirs something in them. They say, you know, I want to be a part of something like that. All right, that's very good. So um, before we kind of move on, is there anything I haven't asked that I should have asked about uh, the Kingdom Men? Hmm. I mean, again, I mean, we'll make sure to, you know, yeah. kind of kind of swing back around and finish up before we get – after we get through these really important questions here sure. in a second. Um, I think people just, um, I, I know in our society there's a, there's a lot of um, uh, tension even about spirituality these days and they, what do churches think and are they mad or who's whatever. I tell you, king, kingdom men are not mad. Kingdom men are here to love and serve people. And, um, in fact, even if people think differently, and, in fact, I love meeting with people that think differently than me. Um, I spent a lot of time on staff with Dickie Spargo. I'm sure you know Dickie. Yes. And that's one thing I learned so well from Dickie is that you're made better when you spend time with people that are different than you yep. and you're open to building relationships. And so I definitely want people to know that with Kingdom Men, you know, we're, we're not here to, to march or to you know, rant or to, you know. Uh, I have a phrase I, I like a lot. It's uh, that you can either make a point or you can make a difference. <laughs> And I think it's, just, it's more important for us to really want to make a difference in life because a lot of people just want to make a point, and kingdom men aren't here just to make a point. We're here. I think when I was young, uh, we had the discussion here. We do some leadership training and leadership stuff, and F3 is a good example of where I've learned as well. When I was younger, I used to think um, differently, but I've learned that leadership to me is really about um, empathy and humility. Mm -hmm. And if you can, you can model those two things, um, and humility requires you – Empathy and those two things together require you to, um, what I've had to learn the harder way is keep my mouth shut more than <laughs> I open it. <laughs> and, but that's how you interact and yes. learn from, from others that are, are different than you. And you can learn something from everybody that you meet or, or everybody oh, that you inter interact with. Yeah, and that's hard. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't be, but boy, it is. Um, I, you know, especially, I learned so much from people like um, Amy on how to do podcasts and 
not be a <laughs> not be a buffoon every I day understand. here at GSM. <laughs> so I appreciate you, you sharing all that, Matt. And we're sure. gonna, you know, we do try to we t- we talk about some heavy topics on a, a few every now and then on this podcast. So we do yeah. like to keep it uh, maybe light a little bit to talk about some Gaston County specifics. Sure. And I'm gonna call this the this is gonna be the I don't know Kingdom Men round of questions. Okay. I come up with ask a, whatever you want. All right. So whether it's on the sheet or not, you can correct. Yeah, I might make something. I might, might I might make come up with some Ohio State questions as we're as oh we're going, no. or maybe we can change your F three name. Hey, in the we're middle on a, of we're on a winning streak though against the Buckeyes on football. So uh. that's true. <laughs> of course, we'll see with this all this. We're, uh, record, we're recording this on the week man. of July fourth, so all this crazy um, conference wow. realignment, and I'm afraid my wolf pack is going to get left behind. But we'll see what happens. So I now, know. what is your when you're not. Um, Involved with doing things with the Kingdom Men or, or your church. I mean, what are, what are some of the favorite things you like to do here in Gaston County? Um, you know, I actually put on there um, favorite thing to do or favorite places to be. Honestly, yeah. one of my favorite places is Bit of Hope Ranch. Okay. I know, again, yeah. you guys had on here in the fall. Yeah. Um, I take my dogs walking out there. It's my place to just be out in nature. It's my place to, to work hard. and do, Like yesterday, I dug some posts for Meg out there, <laughs> so I get sweaty. Uh, but, you know, it's a great blend because, you know, we, we spend a lot of time, you know, at desks, on computers, sure. in meetings. Yep. And, man, it's nice to get outside. It is uh, it's just typical Gasson County, rolling land, some woods, some water, some animals. And uh, so I love uh, getting out there. Um, I also, uh, even closing in on 50, now, how, how old are you? I'm 51. 51. I'm closing on 50 in September, and I still play basketball one day a week. Oh, good for you. So, uh, so that's pretty fun. Um, and I might just try F3 season, see if, uh, if I can get my body back in shape. I, I, I like um, creative exercise. I mean, I still go to the gym some, but it's, it's nice to do stuff that's a little bit different and it challenges you, and I think it helps keep you young, you know, especially when our bodies aren't falling apart. Yeah. I gave a good example. Monday, uh, we did like a double workout, and I overdid it a little bit with my What F3 kind of stuff do you guys do? So, um, like, I ran before the workout at Martha Rivers, and, you know, and we um, – and I've been dealing with some minor health issues the last few months, so I haven't been okay. doing as many boot camps as I as I have. And, and but between uh, – we a guy, a gentleman, called the workout called the 1776 workout. So, you, like, you run a mile, then you do 17 reps of something, um, seven different exercises – I mean, or actually, the seventy-six reps of seven different exercises, and you do them three times. I mean, it's 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 legit. Sounds intense. Yeah, <laughs> and and full disclosure, I didn't do all the reps. I couldn't. I got you. Literally, couldn't do all the sure. reps. So I might have. And it was a little muggy, a little humid. But yeah, yeah. to your point, uh, I think that's what. That's the unique thing about F three, and and it's the workout that get guys out, similar to what you're doing, mm-hmm. but it's a fellowship. And meeting the guys that you that I probably wouldn't have interacted with otherwise. That's what brings you back. It and keeps you and keeps you coming. So, so I'll take that as a what we call a hard commit. That's what I just got I'm from try. you, absolutely. And so you let me know any workout you want to go to. You know, I'll, I'll give you. I'll share all the website information again for F three Gastonia. Dude, and yes, um, and you can listen to that our, our episode of yeah. Gaston's Great where we had F three on there, my, yeah. myself and two other. Did they F3 give you secrets guy. like behind the whole? Not really. I mean, it's pretty open book when okay. it comes to F three. So what about your favorite dessert shop or bakery or something here in Gaston County? You know, County? it was interesting like? when I thought about that, and um, I realized that it's uh, it's my mother-in-law's kitchen. <laughs> it is. Okay. I like I like Barry's Bakery. I like Jackson's. But, you know, when my mother-in-law can make some chocolate delight or oh, some wow. strawberry pretzel That's stuff. That's a good answer. Woo, man, good. Have, have you got a favorite uh, place to – desserts or a place to eat? Um, favorite dessert, I would probably have to say – I'd probably have to say Tony's. Tony's yeah. ice cream. Yeah. Uh, you know, previous season, that was one of our questions, what's your favorite Tony's ice cream flavor? Oh, and we were kind of okay. we trying to mix it up a little bit. This <laughs> And my favorite restaurant is probably, I don't know, Pita Wheel. Oh, or yeah. Web Kitchen, Web Custom Kitchen. Oh, nice. What about you? The last place you ate and what did you order? Um, we actually did get some Jackson's over the weekend. <laughs> okay. I love getting takeout from there. It <laughs> makes my wife smile. Oh, man. That's good, but uh, we love going down to Amber Jacks. That's definitely one of our favorites. Okay, um, yeah, down New Hope Road. Yeah, that's good eating there. Um, and uh, I don't know, but yeah, we're we're pretty simple people. Yeah, me and, me and Meg are. Um, but uh, love, and it was interesting. We um, we had a family that had moved here a couple years ago. We met with them, and they they said there was nowhere to eat in Gaston County. 
In fact, they picked one of my fair places and slammed on it. And I was like, did you not just move here? And now you're like picking on. Wow. I was, I was, I was so insulted. And I thought, man, there are so many different places to yeah. eat here. What would they say about Gaston County 20 years ago? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so, they'd be appalled. But now, yeah, I mean, I, you can go weeks and weeks and weeks and months, actually years and not eat at the same place Absolutely, if you really wanted to. Totally. Hmm. Now, you know, I have to edit it out. I don't know, but it was kind of what I call the Atlanta effect that I really, I feel like some people move okay. from Atlanta yeah. and they just look at us as kind of like the stepchild. I'm like, well, then either move to Atlanta <laughs> or, or appreciate what we have. Oh, no, we're not going to edit that out. No. That's in. That's there you in, go. That's Thank in for you. The I appreciate it. I, I, I respect, I mean, I stand up for Gaston County and, um, but uh, so you a North Carolina mountain or beach? More of a beach person. You know it depends. If we're if we're definitely going for just a relaxing vacation, we head to the beach. Love that. But uh, me and my wife also like heading up to Boone or those areas to hike a little bit, take our dogs. Yeah. Uh, how about you? What's, what's your preference? Um, you know what? Growing up, I was a beach person, but you know my daughter's my son went to Western Carolina. Uh, my daughter is at Appalachian State, so the last five or six years we spent a lot of time up in the western, going yeah. toward. You know, because Silva is a great town uh-huh. right there at Colby, yeah, and yeah, we, we've, we've really fallen in love with that area and then spend a lot of time up in, in Blowing Rock and, and Boone area as well. So for me, more relaxing probably be the, the mountain, frankly, yeah, um, just nature, and uh, there's something peaceful very peaceful about that. Well, what's, your, uh, what's your son going to do for free? Um, he actually today is July 7th. is his first day of private pilot's license, getting his – uh, lessons really? so he has out at gaston yeah. municipal airport that's oh, what he right. believes i think that's his current what he thinks he wants to do and nice. so we'll see how you feel about that um you know what he seems really excited about it and um if that's something that he can find some you know i'm uh, i'm a search for joy person i'm not sure you yeah. can get a whole, how much joy you can get out of work i get joy here because of the people that, that I get to interact with every day. But if you can find that something that gives you joy and, and um, feels like your sense of accomplishment, I know it seems from, you know, men, I think, need a sense of, feel a sense of accomplishment. I mean, most people probably do, but men especially need to feel a sense yep. of accomplishment and what they're doing day to day. And, and if he can get that from that, then, then let, let's hope, let's hope that's something that he, he can find. But we'll see. You know, he's 23 when I was 23. Yeah, I didn't know either. <laughs> I had well, no we idea. live, uh, we live, Right around the corner from Villa Roma, so we pass underneath the flight path a lot. So yep. I will keep an eye out. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so I'm interested to get you know because to, to see how the how his day went. Um, yeah, and, and exactly what he did. So Great. good for him. This is a, a question. I guess I'll, I might modify it, but we already know what the answer is. But yeah. I'm going to ask it anyway. Yeah. So UNC Duke, NC State, or you know, out of those, and in fact, now you said you're in a state alum, right? I am. Okay. So uh, just recently, I finally got to see the 30 for 30 on, on them and the 83 team. Oh, wow. Which yeah. Is incredible. Yeah. Oh, man. So, so I, yeah, my dad went to NC State. So I, I grew up and I still remember that moment distinctly. Oh. I, was, I was 12 years old when, no that, when that. Oh, when incredible. That, when that pass was. Um, That's right. Was, was <laughs> put into the basket. Yep. Definitely. But no, I, uh, when I moved down here, um, I love seeing the uh, the ferocity of the rivalries. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I'm I tell you, out of those, I will not root for Duke because I, I think, especially when they went uh, the one and done route, I think Coach K really sold out. And I don't <laughs> like that. Car- I'm not a big Carolina fan, but honestly, I was rooting for them with the the run they had. Yeah, it was Davis, a good run. So it was fun. But and then definitely, I'd love to see kind of the underdog state rise up among them anytime they can. So. Uh, well, something that we mentioned just a few minutes ago about this whole conference realignment uh, thing that was like going to happen. Uh, yeah, my I guess my big concern would be the loss of those rivalries. Oh, you know, no. is what would happen, especially oh, no. in a conference like ACC, who's been around for so long. Yeah, it's it's very disappointing because you know college athletics still has a chance to be as pure as possible, even with NIL and stuff like that. But you know, when you when you start losing those rivalries, yeah, it's just a shame because. You know, the reality is most of those those young men and women will not play professionally. So this this is their last chance to have sports that like really matter. Yeah. And for, you know, competitors like us, you know, there's something to that about, you know, rolling the ball out and actually having a game that matters and then you start paying and then there's not rivalries and then you got UCLA playing against Maryland. It's that's like, weird, yeah. That's gonna be know. strange. So So um Matt, what is something very few people know about you? You know, that's an interesting question. I don't know if you, like, y'all have asked yourselves that because, you know, it's hard to kind of come up with something that really 
most people don't know. And so, uh, so I came up with a really strange one because, you know, I could have said, well, I've, you know, I parachuted three times, you know, that was, that was fun and, you know, different things. But um, so the thing that very few people know about me is at our house, um, you know, we have a pool and our deck next level kind of like overlooks it. And what most people don't know is that I have full intentions that I am going to jump off of the roof onto our pool one day. And my wife, I mentioned it to her, and she said, no, you're never going to do that. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, I'm just, there's just still something inside of me that's like that, that little boy that, like, just needs that adventure, that fear of, like, you're about to do something, and it's really kind of scary, but you're just going to do it. And I'm talking about, you know, being, it, yeah. being responsible. Well, the old Southern Redneck thing that says, watch this. Watch and, this. Yeah, see what happens. I'm going to tell my son, hey, get Facebook Live out. I'm going to do it. And it's not that high. I mean, it's, you know, whatever, nine or ten feet, but you're going to have to project a little bit. So we definitely got to be ready to run and jump. But I'm going to do that someday. So you guys be watching for that on Facebook someday. So if Meg is listening, I did not encourage that. <laughs> <laughs> that was all on, on his own <laughs> answer that. Oh, man. So how about a, a book um, you would recommend to our listeners or blog or article or um, just something that you would? You know, it was interesting. I got exposed to a um, um, another podcast site recently it's called sports epreneur like it's it's combined the word sport and entrepreneur okay and um uh one of the side jobs i do is i'm a chaplain and um one of the companies i'm chaplain with in charlotte the ceo was on that site and he sent me the link and it's really cool so sports epreneur is dot com and his uh his podcast which actually I'll, i'll send you a link if you ever drive and you got 25 minutes. It was really interesting. First, he talked about playing baseball at Carolina, playing baseball in the minor leagues, and just the rough and tumble of that. And then he took some principles from it into being a CEO oh, wow. of a company in Charlotte. And uh, and it was really good. Hmm. I listened to it. I thought, man, it, it, it completely exceeded my expectations. And so uh, I was impressed because, you know, sometimes you pop, pop in those and it's like, oh, man, this is yeah. This is but uh, it was really uh, it was interesting. Okay, very good. Yeah, I mean, I'm, one reason we started this probably is because I am a I'm in the car. I'm listening to podcasts, all kinds of different uh, uh, podcasts. I, I'm rarely listen to the radio, or and I sure don't listen to news um, <laughs> radio anymore. <laughs> good in the choice. Vehicle. Good choice. So you know, again, kind of staying focused on um, being about Gaston County. Besides Kingdom Men of Gaston County, why would you say Gaston is such a great place? Is it great? Um. You know, some of the high-level stuff of, you know, the weather, the pace of life, the proximity to Charlotte, those things are fine. But to me, what, what is more so are the relationships because I love that in our in our county, I feel like you truly can connect with, with people in all ranges of it. You, know, you go over to Mecklenburg, it's so massive. You just, you're, you're not going to. But in, you know, in, in Gaston County, you know, you could go up to, you know, Mount Holly, Stanley, you know, down, you know, where we at, you know, right before the border of South Carolina, and you know, you can know, you know, Mayor Reed or know some councilman or know the principal here. Right. If you try, there can be so much interconnection. Um, I don't know if you ever saw that show, Touch. The uh, I think it was Kiefer Sutherland was in that, and it talked the concept that there's like a red thread that runs mm-hmm. all over, and they cross and cross and cross and cross. And if you're really intentional, you can figure out how to cross threads in ways that make things better. I mean, you really, like, you leverage it for positivity. And that's just one thing I love about our community. I feel like, you know, through pastors and, and school systems and, you know, you know, Jeff with the school system, all these different people, if you really try hard, you can use those connections just to make life a lot better. And it's built on the positivity of relationships. And so to me, that's that's my number one thing that I, that I like about our, our community. Uh, number two would probably be the diversity of it. And I know that is almost like thrown out these days. It's like a, a badge of courage to have diversity. But the reality is, is, you know, I have friends that are black and Hispanic and Asian and white and rich and poor and all, and, and all this whole mix. And I love that. I really do. I, I don't want to, you know, just hang out with people that are like me. I think that, that type of diversity, um, it could just make us better and make life just more, uh, uh, more exciting. How about you? What, what, why, do you? why do you think Gaston's great? Well, um, I wouldn't be able to say it quite as eloquently as you did, but I, I do think it's ultimately it's ultimately the people um, in the re, in the relationships that I've been able to develop, mm-hmm. mostly through G, you know, the opportunities GSM has provided me, mm-hmm. but through my community work and 
um, frankly, the customers we've served, the, the families we're able to impact. But yeah, it's, it's, it's the people that's um, close enough to Charlotte, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. but we still have the, 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 what I call the hometown feel. Yes. You know, and and yes, it's not it's not too big. It's not too pretentious. Um, yeah. Like I might claim other places I've visited uh-huh. or spent time at. So, yep. so again, that that's good. I appreciate that. So this is my favorite question. I think you mentioned a little bit about this answer already, but I'm gonna uh, re- re- revisit it. So, knowing what you know now, what what advice would you give your 20 year old self? Man, we've changed a lot since we were 20. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, one of my favorite quotes. Um, I will attribute it to Andy Stanley. Do you know him, the pastor mm-hmm. down yeah, in sure do. Atlanta? And he says that the uh, the secret, and actually he got it from Howard Hendricks, to be fair, but he said um, that the secret of concentration is elimination. And the way I look at that, as I said, if you have a, a wall full of lights and you want people to focus on a certain couple of lights, you need to turn out a bunch of lights. Because if there's 100 lights up there, it's yeah. really hard to say, can you see that one right there, right there? But if you turn out like 90 of them and there's 10 of them left, you say, can you see those? So I think in our world, there is such a, a value attributed to being busy that people feel like you're important if you say you're busy. And I say, actually, I don't want to just be important and be busy. I want to be impactful, and I want yeah. my life to matter, and I want to lay my head down at night and be content. So to me, if I went, went back to 20, and this is what I'm just trying to tell myself even each day now, is, Matt, the more I can simplify. Now, simplify doesn't mean being lazy. Because anybody who knows me is not like, you know, I have a high drive and a high work ethic, so this does not mean being lazy, but it does mean simplifying to where you say, I'm going to try to figure out what things I can eliminate, I can cut out of my life, and that's hard because, um, you know, when you got kids or grandkids or a lot of responsibilities, when you say no, usually somebody's not happy about that. But if you can intentionally say no to some things and simplify so that you can give more time to the things that really matter or honestly to the people that really matter, think you can get a lot more contentment and satisfaction out of life than just running ragged and um you know i think social media has its place i think a lot of social media has just like tried to brainwash us into thinking that we got to be busy we got to do yeah. more we got to do impress all no so i would say simplify and uh what's my second part of that uh and slow down um and that's hard for those of us that do have a high drive want to do a lot but if, if we could slow down and simplify and uh I think we'd see that, that life is a lot more enjoyable. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on, on that concept? It sounds like, have you have you written a book? It sounds like you, everything we talked about, you could, sounds like you could write a book about what you've <laughs> talked about <laughs> No, today. I appreciate that. I just, uh, I enjoy communicating. I try to help people when I communicate, so that's part of my gift. Yeah, I think part of that, for me, I, I think when I've been asked that, it's um, the lack of perspective I had when I was 20, the things that seemed really important uh, and important. And the decisions I made that seemed like disasters at the time really were not. <laughs> and it, uh, to me, it's similar to simplify and slow down. And we, in the, the world of information that are so much information at our fingertips with these devices, um, gosh, it's, it's just. Uh, and then, and then to the kind of the same point, men, we cannot multitask. Right. If we want to get something accomplished, right. we. Right. Um, I've seen my wife and and people like. Amy, frankly, they they're capable of that mm-hmm. uh, on on some mm-hmm. level, but I, yeah, I cannot. Oh yeah, <laughs> when you're talking to your wife, man, you better turn this thing yeah. face down. I mean, <laughs> and don't so have a TV behind you in the restaurant, yeah. right? It's like because you'll be especially oh, with, especially with sports <laughs> on, yeah, <to> strategically <laughs> sit to not be distracted. Yep. Yep. So yeah, we're we live in a world where there's so much distractions pulling at us to take us away from what's really important and 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 keep us from having that sense of accomplishment when you do or impact when you do lay your head down at, at, at each night. So, um, so I got one more question for you. You, you said you're 50, 51, 51. Okay. So, um, Lord willing, if he gives you till 80, I think most men now live 75. So what do you think God wants to do with the next 20 plus years of your life? Um, I thought I was the host of this podcast. <laughs> You know that's a it's a, a good question. Actually, I will be two weeks from today. Actually, I will be uh, fifty two. Okay. Um, so before this podcast actually airs, I will have already turned fifty two. Um, you know, I think what I've learned, uh, and I really, I had, a, I've had great great pastors at First Methodist Church since we joined. Um, but Jody Seymour was the pastor when we first joined twenty three, twenty four years ago now, uh-huh. almost. Uh-huh. 
And uh, one of his sermons that struck me was the most was, where can you make the most impact? And what I realized was it's probably with the 250 families here at, at GSM because the um, I spend so much time here. And so I think that's where um, how can we as a company serve those team members, improve you know, their, uh, gosh, their quality of life, um, yeah. their outlook, um, and help them serve our community. Uh, we just really have that opportunity here where I used to think it was a much bigger thing. You know, I mean, sure. what can we do here in Little Gastonia? Mm-hmm. But I think I've learned over the years that um, between church, between GSM, between my Rotary Club, United Way, we already have, I already have all the wow. reach Absolutely. To, to, to impact. Yes. So, and, and, and then I would also relate that to this is where we can control things too in Gastonia. We, I can't control what's going on in Washington. Right. I can't control what's right. going on wherever. Yes. But we can sure work to control what's going on, like this room today. I mean, yeah. why is an air conditioning company doing a podcast about Gaston's great? I don't know. <laughs> why not? I guess I think that's what's happening in Gaston County too is why not us? I like that. You know, why can't we have uh, 20 years ago, maybe even 15 years ago, there seemed to be a lot of attitudes that this is just the way it is. This is the way it's going to be. But something has changed in the last few years with, frankly, people like you yes. doing things uh, that make this, why not us? We, we can I totally agree. We can have I we, love that perspective. Yeah, and, and uh, so, so I think that's what it is and looking closely in, instead of trying to change things in um, somewhere else. Oh, yeah, I agree. Is, you know, the, the, that, that old, gosh, parable where, you know, the, the, the kids walking along um, – picking up uh, starfish and putting yes. them back in the ocean, you yes. know, and somebody asks them, what are you doing? You're not going to uh-huh. be able to get all the, go, get, take care of all those. But, yep. but the one I'm taking care of, Absolutely. you know, is going to be impacted. That. Right. I love that. Um, it, but that, that is, that's what I mean. That's hard to keep that perspective and, and realize that the things we are doing day to day are making a, are making a difference. And, and the, cause we're in the middle of it. We can't right. look back 15 years. It's hard right. to see the, the progress when it you're is. in the middle of it. It is. Wow. wow. So well, great, um, uh, great words from you too. Serious. Well, thank you. Good stuff. So again, this is you know, ultimately our goal here, having you on, is to make more people aware of the organization, sure. um, Kingdom Men of Gaston County. So how can our listeners go? There's a great website. What is that? You sure. mentioned Facebook page. How can they, you know, learn more, get involved, donate, yep. whatever the case Definitely. may be. Well, we we would love to uh, to walk with anyone on their journey. If we could be helpful at all, they can go to. Uh, kingdommengaston.com, so kingdommengaston.com. They can go uh, on Facebook to uh, Kingdom and Gaston, and on any of those spots, they can hit contact us if they got questions, if they got, you know, want to test drive anything. Um, they can they can donate on the site, but that that to me is is never a first step. That's, sure, that's always absolutely. a first step. But it, hey, but I'm also you know proud of what we're doing, and if people want to be a part of that, then they can support it. We we promise that we will steward their gifts wisely. We will. Um, and uh, certainly, if anybody's listening to this and they say, "Man, my, you know, my pastor or my boss or somebody needs to hear about this," man, have you know, get on there, get my contact info, and I'd be happy to come and talk to to any leader like that and give them, you know, five minutes or thirty minutes or buy them lunch and tell them about it. And uh, if it spurs something in them and they say, "Yeah, we want to be a part of it," man, we'd love to get more leaders involved, more people involved, and uh, uh, and honestly, just then stay out of the spotlight. I'm, uh, especially if you come to some of our events now, you see like. I'm on stage very little. Like I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't need that. I don't want that. I love helping other people be successful. So we want to make those pastors the heroes. If we can lift up a men's ministry in a church or in a company and let them be the heroes, man, we'd uh, we'd love to partner with people and do that. Are there any events coming up this fall or next spring that are already planned, or um, is that something you have to go to? They're, the, to they're the, in the works. Okay. We're um, we're looking at uh, trying to have an outdoor one at the pavilion this fall, make it more community oriented. Okay. Um, we have a potential. End of August one, which we're waiting to hear back from uh, two of our newer churches. So I'm hoping next couple of weeks to unveil some more stuff that's coming up. Um, our small groups are ongoing. Our service day definitely is in the fall. So, um, so yeah, people can just check that out and be a part of any of those things they want to, or All just right, kind of watch good. from a distance. And yeah. so, s- listeners, stay t- tuned and um, kind of go to those. You can check in on those uh, Facebook and website to to see maybe some um, upcoming events. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, like I normally do, I'm going to finish up with my own book recommendation and uh, my quote or thought for the week. Nice. And so uh, this is actually a book. Is, I just read it, but it was recommended to me a long time ago. I think it's roughly 20 years old. 
It's a book called It's Your Ship by Michael Abershoff. I apologize to, to him if I'm mispronouncing okay. that, but he is a he was a, a captain of a Navy ship called the Benfold, and he turned it into literally what was the considered the best ship in the Navy in the in the mid nineties. And it's it's a leadership book and just kind of goes through what he did. And boy, it really relates to I'll tell you it relates to any leadership organization, church, community organization, a business. But it was one that was really impactful to me. And since we're recording this, of course, this is going to come out many weeks after July 4th, but we're recording this the week of July 4th. And the kind of the quote that I kind of hang on to every year for this week is from Thomas Jefferson, who said, and I actually had somebody tell me this might not be exactly right, but you know, that's what happens over time is quotes <laughs> get, right, can get huh? changed. But uh, what I have is Thomas Jefferson said, the cost of freedom is eternal vigilance, uh, which to me just means got to pay attention. Um, Freedom is something that I'm afraid we take it take and take for granted uh, here, especially here in in the U.S. Uh, I feel b- personally believe that we've got it better than most places in the world, yes. and so not many places maybe we could have a, a podcast like this right. and talk about the things we talk about. So, yeah. so keep that one in mind in the coming weeks. Wow, that's good. And so to our listeners out there, thanks so much for taking the time to, l- to listen to today's episode, and please continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast. And don't hesitate to contact us at our email, which is podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We are always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please follow us on our social media platforms. And give us that good five-star rating. If there was such a thing as a six rating, I'm sure this episode would, would get that. Anything below that, we just, you know, you can just move on to the next one. Thanks again to Matt Vanderbilt for being our guest today. Gaston's Great is produced and brought to you by Amy Anderson from GSM Services and edited here locally by the Sumner Group. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's great. (laughs) 